for the review journal got uh, our folks who have been here uh, each week and try to answer your guys questions we really appreciate all the feedback and all the questions you guys have we'll try to get into as many of them as we can you can also pop your questions into uh, the youtube link as well and uh, we can get to some of them there if we have time uh, for sure and actually i'll uh you know what i'll prioritize those if we see them because you guys are here live with us uh, but let's jump right into it and uh I'll just combine a bunch of the defensive coordinator questions into one uh, because that is a very hot topic right now, obviously, with the season wrapping up. The Raiders 8-8. Eight eight. Uh, disappointing, I think, uh, from uh, from the Raiders' perspective after starting 6-3, and three, having some wins over some of the elite teams in the league. Uh, to finish 8-8 eight eight is not what uh, this team had in mind halfway through the season, and a lot of that uh, was blamed on the defense. Paul got their defensive coordinator, obviously, uh, was let go, and now they are looking for a new defensive coordinator. Uh, yesterday, John Gruden spoke kind of the uh, the postmortem end of the season press conference, uh, had quite a bit to say. Uh, I think one of the things that stood out to me and to a lot of people was uh, no vacation, according to John Gruden. He said, you don't get vacations from eight and eight, kind of a Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross reference almost to me of uh, coffees for closers. He said, uh, vacations are for winners. You don't get to go on a cruise when you're eight and eight. Uh, obviously, nobody gets to go on cruises right now, but uh, I think uh, the point was taken. Uh, that you don't get to go into a a big off-season celebration or vacation mode when you finish 8-8. Eight eight. It's time to get to work uh, in the Raider facility. So uh, first item of business, as we said, is a defensive coordinator. And if you listen to what he said yesterday, he didn't give an answer as to who the defensive coordinator would be. He didn't even really give um, you know any, any clues necessarily. But you got to read between the lines a little bit, right? Sometimes you just have to pick up on some of the stuff that uh, that is said in a setting like that. And I thought there was one thing that really stood out. And if you, you know, if you watched it, I'm sure uh, the same thing may have jumped out to you. Uh, but John Gruden said that he sees this team as a 4-3 base defense team. Uh, that might not have jumped off the page to a lot of people, uh, but it really should have for one particular reason. One of the main candidates I know that has been lobbying for the job, that wants the job, that a lot of fans want to see take the job, is Wade Phillips, uh, of course, been around the game forever. Uh, great dude, hilarious guy, uh, has been very successful, certainly as a defensive coordinator. I know a lot of people want to see him, and with good reason, uh, he's been really good at that job. But Wade Phillips is a 3-4 guy. Now, he's played a little bit of hybrid defense. He's he's had to make do with personnel at times, uh, played some 4-3, but he is a 3-4 guy. Uh, and... That, to me, was a very telling quote from John Gruden. Even though it was a real quick throwaway line, uh, see, saying he sees this as a 4-3 team, he wants four big guys on the field, uh, is what he said, really stood out to say, hey, I don't think we're going in the direction of Wade Phillips. Uh, Gus Bradley is certainly near the top of that list. They're uh, requesting permission to talk to him. You may uh, know Gus Bradley from the work that he's done with Seattle, with the Legion of Boom defense, uh, was in Jacksonville. Uh, has been with the Chargers the last couple of years. Chargers give give up uh, you know quite a bit of points this year, but their yards were still actually decent. Uh, last couple of years when they were a little bit healthier on defense, they were much better on the defensive side of the ball. Gus Bradley right there at the top uh, of that list. Raheem Morris as well, another guy. Uh, we're not exactly sure what's going to happen. And he's been the interim head coach, of course, in Atlanta for the last couple of weeks uh, after taking over uh, that position. Uh, he may get a head coaching job somewhere. He interviewed with the Falcons. I'm sure he's going to get interviews elsewhere. Um, so we'll see how that works out. Raheem Morris has been number one on my list. Not that I have any say or uh, you know <laughs> any influence or anything like that. Uh, Raheem Morris right away from the beginning, I thought, made a ton of sense. He's a guy that's ready to be a head coach. He probably should get a head coaching job. But if he doesn't, uh, I think would be a great choice. And I see your question there, Raiders for Life. Uh, Raheem Morris would be my pick. Uh, but I think Gus Bradley may be maybe easing to the top of the list right about now for the Raiders. So I, I think Gus Bradley may have a little bit of an edge, and that may be because they believe Raheem Morris is going to get a head coaching job. Uh, John Gruden has a uh, big history, both, but really with uh, Raheem Morris, uh, has talked about the uh, the respect they have for each other and the friendship that they have from working in Tampa together. So uh, that would make some sense. Uh, Joe Barry makes some sense for some family ties as well uh, to the team. I, I think uh, he would be a pretty good choice, uh, but I think that they are – they're looking at, you know, if you had to rank right now, I think Gus Bradley won 
uh, maybe Raheem Morris in there uh, around two, and then some other guys uh, behind them. There, there's definitely a wide option of choices, but those are the names I think uh, that we're focusing in on uh, right now. And Gus Bradley right now, I think being the, the hot name uh, after getting uh, Licko with the Chargers coaching staff uh, down in Los Angeles. So, so that's something to definitely keep an eye on the next couple of days. That is the first item of business. I know some of the questions we have are about, you know, free agency and, um, you know, draft, things like that down the road. Uh, first item of business, without doubt, uh, for the Raiders is hiring a new defensive coordinator. So that will be uh, the next item up on the list. Uh, looking at uh, Raiders for Life comment here, uh, I need Hugh Jackson back in the NFL. I think that's not a crazy thought. Uh, I think that, that that would be a possibility as well. Uh, but he said, I'm going Raheem Morris. That was Raiders for Life. I would agree. But I think Gus Bradley right now is the name uh, to watch for the moment. Uh, jumping into a couple other of these, I just saw a couple of questions up there. Oh, that was another one from uh, Bolander2 up on Twitter. Thank you, sir, for a few questions uh, that you submitted. Uh, was Ruggs' unproductive season a product of Gruden lack of imagination? I, I don't think so. I think there's there's a couple of factors. First of all, the stats clearly weren't great for Henry Ruggs. Be beginning and end of sentence right there. Uh, on paper, not a great season for Henry Ruggs, especially when you see, you know, Jerry Judy had a good year. The drops, of course, were there for Jerry Judy, but he was really, really productive. Um, and he was picked behind him. C.D. Lamb was productive. Uh, even when the Cowboys offense, you know, took a nosedive with no Dak Prescott and when Andy Dalton wasn't in there, uh, C.D. Lamb still found a way to be productive. He had some, some you know, some down spots, but uh, had a pretty good season. And Justin Jefferson, maybe the best rookie uh, in all the NFL. So uh, you've got those, you know, and other receivers too. Jalen Rieger was productive for a couple of weeks uh, before a couple of injuries there. Like, there was just a bunch of guys that were productive as rookies. So I think that, you know, makes Henry Ruggs, stats look even worse than they maybe are uh so 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 those things are, are definitely something to think about but here's the thing with henry ruggs first of all i i do believe uh that he's going to take some steps forward uh you know in this offseason i think he's a guy that kind of needed that offseason wasn't able to get it uh, wasn't able to really figure out his role necessarily on this team and the raiders didn't really you know they didn't really wait for him they were like all right we're going full steam ahead and if you're left behind or left behind uh, so, you know, they, they wanted to figure out ways to get him more involved, uh, but they just weren't able to. So, yeah, I think it's disappointing. And I think there's a little bit of a yellow flag, like, OK, you know, it, where is he going to be in his development? How long is it going to take him to get to that level? But that is mitigated because I, I you know, I talked to a lot of guys uh, around the league, a lot of the, the scouting type guys and, and the, the PFF guys in particular uh, for Pro Football Focus. And I know people don't love a lot of their work. I think it's it's fantastic. I really like what they do. Uh, and they're very knowledgeable when you talk to them. And they keep saying that Henry Ruggs is way more impactful than anybody thinks based on the numbers. And, and if you look at the film, you can see why. Uh, so many of Nelson Aguilar's big plays were, I don't want to say because of Henry Ruggs, but Henry Ruggs really aided several of them. Uh, when he's on the field, even though he's not putting up the numbers, when he's on the field, there's so much attention on him. And you can watch when he goes in motion. The entire defense has their focus on where Henry Ruggs is. And when he goes down the field, obviously, with that kind of speed, uh, he's almost always the fastest player on the field every week. Like, there's going to be attention. You don't want to let him get deep. You saw that, you know, what, what happens against the Jets when you go single coverage down the left side of the field in the last play. I mean, a ridiculous play call for the defense, but still, Henry Ruggs takes a pin. Uh, you see it um, in a couple other these spots. The, the Chiefs game, the first game on the road, they had all kinds of trouble. Uh, containing him and 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 the safeties were all over the place trying to figure out how to keep up with Henry Ruggs. So there was impact beyond catches and you know carries and yardage for Henry Ruggs. And I know people don't love hearing that they want to see the big fantasy football numbers uh, put up. It just it just wasn't there for Henry Ruggs. I think it will be in the future. Uh, but you know I, I think the impact was there even if the st statistics weren't at times. And I'm not you know I'm not you know defending Henry Ruggs. I'm not just trying to, you know, blow smoke or anything like that. In fact, I, I was looking back at my uh, draft analysis from last year as I get ready to do draft analysis this year. And I, I flat out said, listen, Justin Jefferson is better than Henry Ruggs. And if the, if the Raiders take Henry Ruggs, it's probably a mistake, but they've got him in there. And, and I think you have to actually analyze what he's doing. Uh, and just don't say, Hey, he's a total bust because the numbers weren't great. There is a, an impact beyond that. So that is something to keep in mind. 
uh, with Henry Ruggs as the Raiders go forward. Uh, was seeing another comment up here. Um, what type of defender should we draft? We seem to have a good base, but need some dogs. Thoughts? Yeah, I would I would agree. There, there's there's talent there on the defensive side. Um, I think maybe a new, you know, what they what they said, new voice, new energy uh, on the defense is what they were looking for. That might help some of those guys uh, get unlocked a little bit. Uh, but when you look around, like Cleef Earl had a lot of pressure on him because of where he was drafted. Uh, but he's actually been a really solid three down defender. Uh, and I know when you draft a defensive end fourth in the draft, everybody just looks at sack numbers, just like we're talking about Henry Ruggs. Uh, the, the impact is beyond the numbers. Cleveland Furl, I think, is a really solid player. He's good against the run, sets a good edge, uh, does get pressure sometimes, generates some pressure, and uh, gets to the quarterback. But he's more of an impactful player, more of that three-down type guy like Jadavion Clowney, who a lot of people have looked at as a pass rusher. He's really not. He's a more solid three-down player, really good against the run, uh, can get to the quarterback occasionally. I think Cleveland Furl is that type of player, uh, maybe without the the splashy highlights, but um, yeah, I think Cleveland Furl is a good base to start with. Some of the guys on the on the interior of the defensive line uh, were pretty good this year as well. I know Mo Hurst, when he was healthy, uh, was was pretty impactful there. So there are some good building blocks. Max Crosby, I think, is going to be in a better role when he can be just a pass rush specialist and maybe get another defensive end that's more of a three-down guy and let Crosby just come in on third downs and just get after the quarterback. That's definitely his strength. So there's there's those guys there. Um, I think Corey Littleton takes a step forward. I think Nick Kwiatkowski is really good. So, um, you know, you've got that. In the secondary, you need time for Arnett and Mullen to grow. Mullen was pretty good this year. Arnett had trouble staying on the field and, you know, struggled at times in coverage. But I think he he's talented. And Abram, they just they need to figure out a better role for him. You know, as a, as a coverage safety, he was exposed a lot. Uh, but I think there's a role that you can figure out for him to just be a ball hawking type guy if you get another safety. So I'd be looking at a an experienced dynamic type safety that can pair with Abram uh, and certainly an edge rusher. And I saw uh, a comment there, Leonard Williams, number one free agent target. Uh, that is something that I was going to get to um, with, with them. Uh, I think that's, a, that's the type of guy to look for. You need just a destroyer uh, on that defensive line. You need an edge rusher, somebody to get to the quarterback. They have not had that. They have not been able to find it. They've been trying to draft. They signed Carl Nassib last year. Uh, they need that explosive pass rush type guy. Uh, and they're not easy to find, either through the draft or free agency. But that's where uh, I would be targeting if I were the Raiders. Um, also, I think there's still there maybe an infusion of youth on the offensive line is something to look for as well. And, um, you know, I, I don't think it would be the worst thing in the world to also look at another receiver because Nelson Aguilar could go uh, in this year with the uh, reduced cap. It's going to be tough to, you know, a guy like Nelson Aguilar with a breakout season, do you invest money in him after investing so much draft capital? So uh, we'll see exactly uh, where we go from there with the Raiders in free agency. Uh, do you think Nick Morrow will be back next season? I think he was our best linebacker this past season. That's from Sebastian Luppert. Um, I think they're going to try to sign him. Here's the problem. I, I know, you know, yesterday Nick Morrow said he wants to be a Raider. Uh, he loves it. He loves it in Las Vegas. He loved it in Oakland. Uh, he just loves this franchise, loves the fans. He wants to be there. He he had a good season, as you pointed out. You know, he thought he thought he was the best linebacker. Kwiatkowski was right there, but Morrow was really good. Um, he's going to be in demand on the market, so the Raiders are going to have to make a decision on him uh, and whether they can pay him to be a starting type linebacker instead of the you know a backup type role, which they thought they'd probably be able to resign him for. Uh, he's a guy that somebody is going to want and somebody's going to want to go get. So that's going to be tough to. Uh, try to fit in uh, under the cap with everything that else is going on. Somebody said Abram could be a great linebacker. A um, little on the small side. He might need to put on some, some size. Uh, but, yeah, they, they need to get him closer to the line of scrimmage and let him go. Uh, trying to bounce around here. Ulao, Ulao, what did you think of Corey Littleton's honesty of the year and his performance of the year? Uh, do you think we were asking him to do too much and get out of his comfort zone? Yeah, I I don't think too much is the right answer. The comfort zone thing, yeah. I mean, he was he found a niche with the Rams and really settled into it, and they knew how to use him. They knew how he preferred to be used. They knew he, what he was successful at, and they really just allowed that to happen. Kind of what I'm talking about with Jonathan Abram, you know, different type of player, but you just need to figure out exactly how to use those guys sometimes. And the Raiders tried to plug him into a hole. Didn't really fit. It was like a square peg in a round hole at times. But I think as the year went on, 
you saw Littleton get a little bit better. I think he was there was also some injury issues that were kind of he was playing through, he was battling some stuff. Um there's other there's some other factors. I think he was a little smaller uh, than he was with the Rams too. Might might you know might have uh, dropped a little bit of weight, so maybe he wants to put that back on. Uh, there's there's a there's there's just little things and little things that he has to find. But I think Corey Littleton, as the year went on, was better. And yesterday, you know, as you pointed out, a really honest assessment of his career of his season called it miserable. Um, I think he is the type of guy that is going to do everything he can this off season to make sure that doesn't happen again. Uh, so I think that's one really good factor about Corey Littleton. He's a, he's accountable. You heard that yesterday. Uh, so that's what I thought of when when he said that uh, that hey, this is a guy who's not going to let that happen again. Uh, so certainly. Uh, that is something to monitor. Uh, Clean needs to gain weight, play inside, and bring in J.J. Watt. J.J. Watt's getting old, man. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that is the type of move that could work. I just, I just don't know if he's the right guy uh, to, uh, to focus on and makes a lot of money. Raiders don't necessarily have a ton of money right now. Um, trying to find some of these other questions here. Sorry, you guys have been great here. So, um uh, let's see. My eyes are on the Broncos and Von Miller situation. They can save 18 million and need to side Justin Simmons. Can't have both unless Miller restructures contract. Well, uh, not sure how much yes on the Broncos Von Miller situation. I think you're talking about financially. Um, there also is some uh some issues right now going on uh involving some text messages. So uh, not sure how that's gonna end up playing out either. Uh so that is also maybe something to monitor. Would you consider this season a successful season? Uh, eight and eight, I call the eight and eight season. That is uh, uh, on the YouTube comments as well. Um, that's an interesting question. So they were their 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 season win total at the sports books was seven and a half, and they went over that. And I think usually if you go over that total, you know, not that the sports books know everything, but it's a pretty good uh, indicator of what the expectations are of a team. And they went over, and so I think anytime you go over that, you look at the season and say, hey, that was probably, you know, it, you could probably chalk that up as a success. Uh, but circumstances change for the Raiders, right? They have a first half of the season with a brutal schedule. They get through it six and three uh, with some wins over some of the best teams in the league, the Chiefs, the Saints, teams like that. All of a sudden, the expectations change for the Raiders. So, uh, yeah, if you look at the season as a whole, I'd say not successful, but it was adequate. It was, I think, barely exceeded expectations. Uh, but the, if you ask around the building, the playoffs were always the goal. They believe that they can make the playoffs. They wanted to keep taking steps forward. You know, from Gruden's first year to a second, they improved up to seven wins. And then you know, to go to eight is still an improvement. Uh, but I don't think, is even if you want to say they slightly exceeded expectations, I don't think anybody in the building uh, would call it a successful season, especially after uh, how it started. So it's it's all about it's all about expectation and, and you know, measuring sticks and where you are. Uh, depending on how you measure the season, uh, you can make the argument uh, either way. Uh, I'd love it. Here's quite another question. I'd love it if the Raiders brought back uh, uh, Jack Del Rio to be the defensive coordinator. Um, Raheem Morris, Rex Ryan, Gus Bradley, even Wade Phillips are all on top of their game. That is, that is true. There's there's some really good candidates. I don't think it's going to be Del Rio. I don't know if uh, that would really happen. Uh, can we expect Derek Carr to finish out his contract considering he was having a pretty good year? This is really fascinating to me because I, I think most people would have bet against that uh, going into this season uh, that, you know, Derek Carr would be able to finish out with two more years uh, on his deal after this. I still don't know. Like, I, by all measures, Derek Carr had a very, very good season. And I don't even think you add any qualifiers to that. I think he, was, he just had a really, really good year. Um, certainly some struggles in the red zone, which was one of the questions we're going to get to as well. But um, that was really the only problem he had and the, the strip sacks once again but th there's a lot of factors that go into that so uh yeah Derek Carr had a successful season but John, you know John Gruden I don't think is I, I think his patience is running out on, in terms of the win-loss record on the field and while you can't pin the record or the lack of playoffs or lack of success on Derek Carr because he was doing his job very well oftentimes quarterbacks end up the scapegoat that's the position that John Gruden is closest to uh, the famous quote, and I think it's one to, to keep in mind, that John Gruden doesn't marry quarterbacks, he dates them. And that is something that has stuck in my mind ever since I heard it. Uh, and I, I think there is a point where John Gruden, even though it's not on Derek Carr, just says enough and, and tries to go in a different direction. I, I think that is absolutely possible. 
So I, I wouldn't even look at it. Sorry, I think I, uh, I left it. Um, I wouldn't look at it as anything against Derek Carr. Um, I would just say maybe John Gruden wants to move on at some point. So that, that's something to watch. Uh, and, and I also, I think the, the issue is where do you go? This is, this is something that goes back to a lot of different teams that I've, I've talked about uh, over the years. But it, it, uh, one of the worst positions to be in is to have a quarterback that is like the eighth best to like 15th best in the league. Like that's a really good quarterback. One of the best in the league. Great. But you always are like, well, what about those guys that are above them? Like, how do we get that guy? So you, you, there's two ways you can go. If you say have that guy, like say Derek Carr is the eighth best quarterback in the league or maybe 10th best quarterback in the league. Okay, you want to move on and try to get one of the top 10. Fine, but there's only so many of those guys. Nine to be exact. Uh, so if you make a move, you have to go up. You have to find somebody better. That's where the challenge is. It's one thing to say, hey, move on from the quarterback. Where do you go? Who's better? Who can you find that's better? That is the question. So, yes, if Aaron Rodgers was all of a sudden available, maybe you, you're like, okay, that's a move. But you have to make a, a upward move uh, if you move on from that guy. Uh, trying to find some more questions here. Do you think the Raiders are going to cut Ty Williams? Uh, why do you think we didn't see more Brian Edwards? Uh, those are kind of related. Yeah, I, I actually do think they will try to find a way to move on from uh, the Tyrell Williams contract just hasn't been on the field much at all the last two years. Uh, I still think he's a very good player, uh, but there is cap issues, and I think that would be one direction to go. Why didn't we see more Brian Edwards? He was hurt a lot. Um, said so every time I, he was on field, he made plays and blocked hard. Absolutely true. I think they have massive expectations for Brian Edwards. He's a guy you watch in training camp, and he was really, really good. Uh, and and we saw it a little bit in that in the Denver game to end the season. Uh, he he's a very physical receiver. Uh, D Derek Carr always says that he, you know, he's a violent player. Uh, can go up and just attack the ball, get it at the you know high the high point of the attack. Um, he just he just and he has unbelievable skills. And as you said, uh, gets out there and blocks too. And and that's very important in this Raiders all in this Raiders offense. So uh, he's a guy that they love, and I think we'll have a really really productive season next year. He just was hurt and was kind of slow to, um, you know, get up to full speed, but. You did see glimpses of what Brian Edwards can be. Uh, whoever is talking about Tyrell Williams, we're not bringing that dude back. I, I think that there's, they're not. You're right. They're not going to. So it's not really worth getting delving into it that far. But they really do like him. Uh, and he's, he's, a, he's a really good presence in the locker room, too, when he's there. Uh, good guy, good player. Uh, so I, I don't think they're, like, you know, angry or anything at him. He just, he's had some tough injury luck and hasn't been able to get on the field. Uh, but yeah, I do think they are uh, moving on. Uh, if Raiders had a ranked 10 to 15 defense, uh, they would have won the Super Bowl this year. I yeah, I don't know if that's the case. Um, their offense was good, really good, 11th in the league. But they the the struggling in the red zone was a real issue. Uh, Daniel Carlson set a franchise record for points. Hunter Renfro said he doesn't want him to set that record ever again. Uh, maybe an extra point record next year, and that would make a big difference in this Raiders team. Yeah, they need to get better on defense. There's zero question about it. Uh, but, you know, we'll see uh, how that's all going to work out. A um, couple more here. You guys are uh, throwing a lot of these out here. So uh, I think Aguilar test free agency here comes back. I think he'll test it for sure. Why wouldn't he? He's coming off a really, really productive season. Uh, Raiders are in some, some you know, they're, they're going to have some space, but uh, they do have some issues. So they're not going to be able to throw a huge contract at him. I think he'll definitely test it, but I don't think it's completely crazy uh, that he would come back at some point. Um, got a couple, yeah, that is that is true. Got some guys are good in training camp, and when the bullets start flying, uh, not the same. And, and for a rookie, I think that's that's definitely the case sometimes. Uh, but Brian Edwards, I, I think, will be a, a pretty legit uh, wide receiver for them. I think he's got all the skills to be. And, and a lot of people talked about after the draft that he could have been uh, even. You know, even better, um, even even drafted higher had he not had some injury issues uh, in college. Uh, saw a couple more here, so I'm trying to get to a couple more of the questions that I just saw come in. Uh, and again, thank you guys. Really, really appreciate a lot of these uh, questions that you threw out. Remember, you can throw them up on Twitter throughout the week. If you see uh, the promo for these uh, Q and A's, you can just tag those on Twitter or uh, email. 
uh, or as you guys are doing here, throw them up in the uh, YouTube link on this video. Uh, will John Gruden be the coach for the 2022 season? Um, that's an actually an interesting question. John Gruden is the coach as long as he wants to be the coach. I think that's the bottom line. Uh, he, I saw people saying, you know, should he be fired? Like, he's not going to be fired. It's his job as long as he wants it. He signed that contract. Uh, Mark Davis committed to him. Uh, John Gruden is the coach of this team as long as he wants it. Now, if I were him, I would be looking at some of the money that broadcasters are getting. We saw Tony Romo get $17 million. We're seeing Drew Brees perhaps step away for a broadcast deal this year for a ton of money. Uh, there's there's so much money in broadcasting right now, especially for a guy like John Gruden, that you know you could go there and not have to lose games on Monday and you know lose games on Sunday and then talk about them on Monday with the media. You can just go back to your life and just call games once a week, bring the, bring in the big paycheck. I mean, that's what I would do. Uh, but I'm not wired the same way John Gruden is. He's competitive. He wants to get this done here. Uh, he's on a mission to do that. So uh, he's he's the coach as long as he wants to be the coach uh, with the Raiders. Uh, about free agents, is there a culture problem that stops top-tier talent from choosing us? Uh, no, there's not. Uh, I don't think there's a culture problem at all. I think I think guys actually want to play for Gruden. Uh, they like him. I think guys like Mayock. I think, I think people like this organization, and they want to come to Las Vegas. Uh, we haven't really seen – a full free agency period with the Raiders in Las Vegas and with them having money. Uh, so I think that's the, that's the key. If you look on the on the hockey side with the Golden Knights, uh, you've seen players really attracted to Las Vegas that wanted to come to Las Vegas. I think you're going to see, see that with the Raiders too. So I wouldn't be worried about that. I think there has been some money issues in terms of just guaranteed deals the last couple of years as they've been working toward getting the stadium. But when, when there's fans next year and uh, with the new stadium, there's going to be a – there was a large influx of, of revenue, so uh, I don't think that's an issue anymore. Uh, so we will see that improve going forward, I believe. Uh, what do you think the Raiders' issues were in the red zone? Just mentioned that a little bit. Uh, lack of creative play calling or lack of player executing the play. How should it be fixed? I think it's everything. Um, and that, that sounds like a cop-out answer. It kind of is in a way. Uh, but there's a lot that goes into it. Uh, John Gruden has talked about the play calling in the red zone, how they have to get a little bit better at. I do think some of while Derek Carr was less conservative this year uh, in general, uh, I think he took more chances, took the, you know shot the ball downfield more. Uh, his you know average depth of target was up. Um, all of those things I think improved on third downs. They were really good, uh, but there was still some conservative nature in the red zone, and and you get that you don't want to make mistakes, and I know that's very important. Derek Carr often talks about not making mistakes in the red zone, uh, but uh, the percentage of throws uh, short of the goal line. Uh, on third downs in the red zone, uh, goal to go situations, throws short of the goal line on third down. That's I know that sounds confusing, but um, I, I think you know what I'm trying to say there, uh, where you don't throw it to the end zone, uh, was way too high. And I believe it's top five in the league of throwing short of the goal line on third down in goal to go situations. So uh, they do need to take a little bit more chances. I think uh, the play calling needs to be, I think, a little bit more creative, as John Gruden pointed out. Uh, there's a lot of factors there to work on. Uh, and let's not forget, as much as people talk about the Raiders running game and how successful it's been the last couple of years, has not really been the case uh, the last, you know, this year. Uh, yards per carry certainly down. Josh Jacobs was injured much of the year, so that was a little bit of a factor. The offensive line was not at full strength. But there, those all were factors uh, in the red zone. The fact that you, you couldn't run the ball like you, like you could last year and the year before uh, was definitely part of it. Uh, man, a bunch more questions in here. So let's just let's just keep going. You guys are uh, excited uh, to uh, <laughs> to talk Raiders here. Now that the season's over, I guess. Um, you think we'll see the Carter Rugs connection be better yet next year? Yes, absolutely. Uh, full off season for Rugs, I think, will be important. And they've they've kind of figured them out a little bit more in terms of how they can use them. Uh, can you work on throwing a better deep ball? I mean, I think deep ball looks good when when he has time and can, can set it up and, and find out like some of the ones that Aguilar were really nice. A couple of throws deep to Waller were pretty good. Um, and I think, the you know, there's a couple of rugs that were really nice. I, I think the deep ball uh, is pretty effective for Derek Carr. Um, Morrow sounds like he's going nowhere. Yeah, I mean, I, but I think that's what you'd expect. I wouldn't read too much into Nick Morrow saying how much he loves it here. Uh, that's what players you would think are going to say. Uh, so I, you know, I, I wouldn't take too much away from that, but I do think they like him, and he likes it. Uh, let's see, what Alabama or Clemson player do we draft this year? That's actually hilarious. I was watching uh, the Clemson game the other day, trying to figure out where the Raiders were going to go because we know how much they love them. And hey, they talk about it. Um, the Raiders have have kind of said that. Hey, listen, these are guys that know how to play in big games. They know how to play 
at a championship level. That's the kind of players uh, that they want to bring in. So, um, you know, does it, it? It's not that surprising uh, that they go there. Uh, Raiders give me high blood pressure. I don't know how we can help you with that. Um, I don't know. Maybe I would say I would I would never do this, but maybe like see the score first, like tape the game, see the score, and then watch it back so you don't have to have panic attacks all throughout the game. Maybe that would help a little bit. It's not as fun, I guess. Um, so we'll, <laughs> we will see. Uh, looks like, unless you guys don't have any more questions, I think that is uh, most of them that were on here. If I uh, scroll up here, make sure I don't see any more. Uh, looks like... <laughs> uh, was Yale ever any good? In basketball, yeah. Uh, I'm very... Uh, very connected with the program, and yes, uh, has a couple good seasons in basketball for sure. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think that looks about it for you guys for the questions. Uh, really, really appreciate, as we said, all season long. We're going to keep that going and uh, have them always keep you up to date on the Raiders, all of our podcasts, our videos, our Q&As with you guys. Everything available up at the again. Thank you so much, guys. Only the first too many. Uh, for as long as you guys want to find out about the is a little bit more uh you know, we stand there, we can be there, we can get you guys some more stories uh, in depth reporting behind the team. That'll do it for us. Thank you guys. Thanks everybody behind the scenes as well. Nathan, Larry, hang us back to you guys and all of you with all your questions. We'll talk to you guys again very soon. That'll do it for the Vegas Nation fan zone. I'm Adam Hill.